Okay, I'm, I'm speaking today again with Dr. Peter Wadhams. Um, uh, uh, can I say my good friend, Dr. Wadhams? <laughs> <Like that. laughs> my good friend, Peter, and um, who is in Ancona, Italy, uh, a country yeah. that is on lockdown, correct? Yes, actually, I'm in Fermo, which is a, a small town near Ancona. Ah, uh, yeah. but, it's, but it's certainly the case that we're on lockdown, and uh, yeah. in fact, I've got curfew. Is, is so, the um, town locked down, the country locked down, is everything locked? Down. Oh, the entire country is locked down. Uh, it's, it's the most drastic there's ever been anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you can't, from 6 p.m. till 6 a.m., you can't be out in the streets at all. Uh, and this is the entire country of Italy. And um, during the day, all you can go out to do is to, to buy food or go to the pharmacy for medicine. And, uh, and that's it. You can't even go to church. There's, 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 uh, it, it's, it's a drastic um, lockdown of the whole country. And it, in fact, it is what Wuhan did. And, and as a result, the Chinese outbreak was controlled. And it's, it seems to be controlling the Italian outbreak, but no other country is doing it. Every other country in Europe is, is absolutely lax, the worst of all being Britain. Let me let me interject though. Um, I, I have a friend, very close friend, who grew up in Shanghai, and um, now lives in in America. And she uh, she she told me if the Chinese government is reporting eight thousand deaths, you can easily add one or two zeros on it and not be far off from the truth, because the Chinese government pathologically lies about things like that. And uh, I, I was told some horrific details about how brutal the uh, the lockdown has been in in, uh, in the Wuhan area. I, I went into that in one of the earlier conversations today, but I, I won't go into it again. Um, so I don't think the Chinese uh, description of the rapid drop off is necessarily true. I don't know if they've controlled it in Wuhan. I don't know what their scheming is about, but Italy, I would trust to give a bit better uh, uh, statistics, a bit more accurate statistics, very much more accurate statistics, or at least something I trust much more. Ira Iran, I'm told also is lying, that they have mass graves. So I don't know. Yes, or um, well, they've been photographed in the air. Um, well, I think Italy can be trusted, and especially because the the uh, the outbreak, the worst of the outbreak, happened in the north of Italy, which is the part with the best healthcare system and the most advanced um, economy, so to speak. And the south of Italy is is sort of back, a bit backward. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we can really trust the Italian statistics, and they're giving out absolute transparency with with data. So. If we need a case or a study of how how what happens if you do particular things, uh, then I think the the Ita Italy provides the best model. Mm, yeah, good. Now um, we won't talk much about the United States. I've already um, gotten my fill of of ranting about uh, the current Trump administration and how the the pathological lies that go on so let's let me not launch into the united states but but um there are probably many many times as many infections as as are being reported because there aren't any test kits yes that, that's that's the case and um it's 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 a sort of typical trump approach that uh, uh if you if you if you don't test for it, you can you can you can pretend it's not there. Yes. Uh, so it's a extraordinary, extraordinarily stupid and short sighted, but typical. Well, it permits him to lie with impunity because nobody knows. Um, again, I, I, you're welcome to discuss Trump, but 
um, I get nauseous every time. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, in that case, it's exactly the same with Boris Johnson. He's Britain's mini Trump, Britain's yeah. lesser Trump replica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, in one of the earlier conversations today, there were, I heard some of the, the horrific uh, insanity that he, he said they're going to go to uh, controlling it by herd uh something where if you if you if if he lets the country half of the country get sick then they will get immunity in that half and the virus will whatever it sounded insane so it's insane it is, it is literally insane um but what he's doing is taking the advice of a literally insane civil servant sir patrick valance who's one of these kind of moronic civil servants who who who, who looks looks at the small print but does has no regard for human beings so he's he's the origin of this theory that um, you you don't take any precautions you let everybody catch the virus and then um, 90 odd five percent of them will be cured and so having been cured then then they'll have immunity um, but of course just five percent are going to be dead, and uh, so that's the first thing. And five percent of uh, of a population of sixty million is uh, three million. So he's blandly expecting and planning that there'll be three million dead people in Britain, which I think the uh, is going to would would cause complete and utter mayhem. And um, so everybody else is following well it should be following the italian model which is very tough and that's why britain doesn't do it because johnson doesn't take tough decisions um but uh, the, the tough thing that that conti has done in, in italy is to to close everything down and the because the only way to reduce the infection rate is isolation social distancing which is you know everybody stays indoors stays at home keeps away from other people so that does mean closing down all social functions all gatherings most activity closing really everything um, and everybody stays indoors and and until um the the infection rate goes right down and um it's worked for um south korea it's working starting to work for italy um the infection rate that's the, the the rate of growth of new cases in italy is down to 14 percent per day which is bad enough but the rate in britain is 30 percent a day and the rate in in most countries that haven't taken any precautions is 30 percent a day now you know britain can is can be bland and and uh, can be uh, complacent as they always are um but and it, it, they can say, oh, well, look, Italy's got 17,000 cases and we've only got 700. So, wow, um, we're, we're ahead of the game. And so we don't, we don't have to take such extreme precautions. But in fact, they have, to, they have to take just as extreme precautions to avoid getting to the point where they've got 17,000 yeah, cases. We're talking about exponential growth. And you can't exponential think growth. in terms of yeah. 7 versus 17 as being significantly different if you have a doubling rate that's measured in days or weeks. It's exactly, like, it's in days and that's, uh, everything is, it's, it's, I think the failure is the complete failure of most people to understand the exponential function. Certainly the failure of Boris Johnson who went, went to Eton and therefore didn't learn any maths um, <laughs> and doesn't understand maths. and. Also, he's a moral coward anyway, and he preferred to do nothing about anything. But uh, the main, one of the main problems is this innumeracy in Britain. This civil servant doesn't understand the maths of the exponential distribution. He's blandly condemning Britain to mass deaths. So, I mean, he's, he's more of a killer than, 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 than Adolf Eichmann or something. He's, he's, he's deliberately killing three million people in britain by that policy and um it, it's it's seen from the outside you realize 
the country is utterly going over a cliff. And of course, the British are too supine and too stupid to see it. They're not seeing what, what's, what's happening. They're not seeing that unless, unless action is taken urgently and instantly, uh, and then, then you get massive death rates. The only way to stop it is to take the most urgent action instantly. And we've already, Britain's already delayed too, far too long. And even if they, they take absolute lockdown now, it's, it's too late. And there's, there's a flaw on top of all of that. There's a flaw in the logic because there's a presumption that once you, quote unquote, are infected and live through that, that it won't reoccur. And apparently, you can get a reoccurrence. That is, you can get it, get cured of it, and it can reoccur. There's already been cases of that where the, it pops up again. And for a second flaw in the logic, it presumes that the novel COVID-19 coronavirus will not mutate into another strain which, to which you don't have immunity. Yes, well, another strain which could be even worse, and if that's possible. Um, yeah, it, it's a really a very, very frightening prospect. Um, and, well, I, was, I went back to England last week just for, for a couple of days because I had a meeting in London, and the, com the complacency was staggering. Everybody was just leading their normal lives, there was no um, medical inspection or anything at, at Stansted Airport. She just came in. Everybody was doing their thing. Even today, even yesterday, I get messages from Cambridge University saying, oh, we've invited this professor from France to come and give a lecture. And it's, it would be wonderful if we had as big an audience as possible to show how much we appreciate him. Absolute lunacy. And so I, you know, I wrote to this guy saying, no, it's the opposite. And I wrote to the vice chancellor saying, look, you're giving out totally bogus advice here. But there was no answer. And, and uh, what they've, their view is they reluctantly follow where the government leads and the government isn't leading. So the, there's no move to prevent gatherings or the, uh, even, you know, the sort of gatherings that... Uh, should be prevented are all gatherings. Uh, I mean, they're, they're talked about sort of a, abandoning football matches, but it's far, far more than that. It's, it's yeah. every, every time that any number of people gather. Oh my that. God, you mean I can't go down to the local pub for a pint? Well, exactly, yeah, that's, that's the sort of thing that, you know, that, that the English don't accept that there's a crisis. Yeah. Um, and as a result, they're going to suffer enormous numbers of deaths. And looking on from the outside, where, from a country like Italy, which is locked down completely, you feel a just you terrify, terribly sad and angry that Britain can be so stupid when, in fact, you think of it, I've always thought of it as a fairly intelligent country. But, of course, that's not the case anymore with Brexit. It's yeah. shown that it is, in fact, a very stupid country. Yeah. But this is worse than Brexit. Brexit just well, involved economic collapse and through stupidity. But this involves mass deaths through stupidity. It, it, it occurred to me while you were talking about Boris Johnson's cowardice and stupidity that um, there may have been some calculation or miscalculation, let's say, that um, it would be cheaper economically cheaper to do nothing than to mobilize and spend a whole lot of money on test kits and 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 hospitals and and health care and um i don't know it's it it basically is insane so yeah it could be the economic argument because uh this lockdown in italy has virtually brought the country to a halt so there's it's massive massive costs involved there they and uh, which, in fact, the European Union is, is giving Italy a whole load of money because Italy's the worst case country in Europe. And uh, the, the, 
we're being bailed out by the European Union. But of course, Britain can't be bailed out by the European Union because <laughs> it's chucked itself away from the British yeah. and the European Union. Let, 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 yeah. let me touch on that, that, that point of economics, which I, you know, my thing is that the, the stupidity of the human race and our hubris about climate change, about the damage to the ecosystems of Earth, about the, the, the offense against nature, our, our assault on nature, can be traced back to a single word, money that we make decisions that are from a defective economic system, growth economics, neoclassical neo growth economics, which at the axiomatic level has two modes, either exponential growth by interest rates, anything that grows as a percentage of itself is exponential. And so it has to grow or it has to collapse. And in order to avoid collapse, such as in the 2008, 2009 meltdown and the meltdowns, the way the central banks, the only tool that they can think of is to throw more money out there to try to create liquidity and restart to pull the, 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 the cord and try to restart growth. And it's insane because the growth then takes more if it succeeds it, it's even faster. There's more money out there buying up more goods, encouraging more despoiling of nature, more use of, of re wasteful use of resources and the, the filling of our waste sinks, the, the, the carbon sink in the atmosphere, which creates climate change, the, the sinks in the ocean when you dump your, your uh, heavy metals into the ocean and it gets uh, concentrated in the, the, the pelagic, the tuna fish, and the marlin, and the big fish, the top of the food chain. We are committing ecocide and committing suicide because we have this stupid, stupid economic system that believes you have to grow forever, forever at an exponential rate. And the the prime beneficiaries are the wealthy, the banks, and the wealthy elites. So it, it's when I think about it and talk about it, I, I, I just want to tear my hair out, but. Well, it's certainly the case that it's the wealthy elites can escape things like this. It's, 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 it's a bit like in the, the, the Cameron where the, uh, uh, the wealthy people went and lived on, on the mountaintops and told each other stories while the plague was, was going on. Nothing, nothing much has changed in a thousand years. Except, uh, the wealthy people. <laughs> except if, the, if, the, if the economy collapses, I mean, they can escape the virus by going into their, their bunkers and their, their mountaintop chalets and castles or wherever. But if the economy collapses, then their money is not worth anything. And, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and what are you going to do with gold bars? How are you going to spend them? You know, it comes yeah. down to you can't eat money in any form. You can't eat money. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it's the, 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 the hugest defective thinking that I can imagine. I, I did in one of my programs at, at uh, the Climate Talks in, in Madrid, uh, where we, we just attended in December, um, the, the very first one I did, I, I said basically that the wealthy think that they're going to escape either into bunkers or into, uh, to Mars or into colonies in outer space. And if you look at the, uh, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and Richard Branson, um, they're all talking about different forms of, of getting off the earth. And if you put all three together, one wants to develop colonies floating in, in artificial cities in outer space, and one wants to land on Mars, and I think it was Elon Musk who said there's a 70% chance that he will um, be living on Mars during his lifetime, and and Richard Branson who wants to provide the uh, the shuttles to get up and back and forth. It's like, uh, duh. But to think that you are living on Mars, if you want to live on Mars, then go to uh, the Sahara Desert and try setting up shop for a while, you know. Well, uh, this case of 
can you escape? You can't. Um, I think, as you mentioned in, in an earlier talk, you, if you're super rich, you have to have servants to do everything for you. And the servants can, can carry the virus, like the passengers on these cruise ships. Um, the, each passenger will be isolated uh, and in his cabin, but he'd still be waited on hand and foot by the crew. And the crew will be, well, uh, are, always are, poverty-stricken Filipinos paid almost nothing, herded together in, in sort of six, six persons to a cabin down below and with no protection at all. And they do all the cleaning and all the cooking and everything. And so the, the, the virus is spread by the crew um, because the crew are the slaves and servants of the passengers, but the passengers don't escape it because they catch it then from the crew. So uh, it's it's that a cruise ship is a kind of a a, a small. It's a floating um, petri dish. Petri dish, yes. It's 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 the the it's the capitalist system in in miniature. We have two cruise ships in Honolulu not being allowed to, to dock and disembark. We don't have the medical facilities to take care of all of the infections and all of the uh, infected uh, passengers. They're not publishing any numbers. I don't think they've sent anybody on board to do tests. It's, again, the United States is just zero tests. By the way, I will rant about Trump to the extent that um, uh, a friend who's in the intelligence community told me that last year, Trump basically fired the top levels of the chain of command of the pandemic response team. That yes, he, he, and he actually- about it. He was asked about it at a press conference and his response was, I don't know anything about that. Well, it, it's possible he doesn't because having done it, he probably then forgot that and went on to something else because he, he wants somebody else he wanted to attack on Twitter. But it's, it's, it, it's typical of him. I mean, that, that could, because they're doing a useful and important job. And, and I think because those organizations were set up by Obama, therefore they had to be destroyed on yes. principle. That yes, Any, anything that Obama touched. I mean, the man is like the, the archetypical vengeful uh, uh, I, I can't think of a, a, a person in history who, who compares somebody who tries to undo everything that his predecessor has done. Doesn't well, like stop to think is good. Huh? <laughs> it's like a mafia feud where, where you, uh, you try to wipe out all the members of the victims of the family of the of your opponent as well as the the opponent himself. So yeah, yeah, but I don't, really <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say. We 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 live in a very very strange time, and again, I I pin the blame for Trump's election on money, because we have managed for the sake of money to create a political situation in the United States where the the let's say the republican right is composed of grossly speaking the wealthy people who are corrupt and uh scheming and lying cheating their way into power and the the lowest levels of intelligence where they will believe anything you know the masses who you can you can fool with any good phrase like make america great again excuse me Make America great again? Anyhow. <sighs> well, let's or in the case of Brexit, let's take control. Let's stop these Europeans from telling us what to do. Yeah. Okay, so we... enough with the, the political rant. I, um, I don't want to get more and more divisive uh, in the United States, but that's, that's the way it's going.